Today we are going to make some trimethyl borate. For this, 30 milliliters of sulfuric acid, 200 milliliters of methanol, and 61.83 grams of boric acid are needed. We start off by adding all of the boric acid to a 1 liter round bottom flask. A magnetic stir bar is dropped in. Afterwards, 200 milliliters of methanol are measured out and added. Approximately 30 milliliters of sulfuric acid are added as a catalyst and dehydration agent. The addition of the sulfuric acid is actually exothermic and therefore a reflux condenser was added to add in the rest of it. I did not want too much methanol vapors escaping the flask. Because of the reflux condenser, no more methanol escaped. For further safety reasons, an evacuation hose leading outside was attached to the reflux. Heating and stirring were turned on. This mixture was allowed to reflux for 20 minutes. In the beginning all of the boric acid dissolved into the solution. Some of it got directly converted to trimethyl borate. The boric acid reacts with methanol to form trimethyl borate and water. Sulfuric acid acts as a dehydration agent and as a catalyst. Therefore, the equilibrium reaction is driven more to the right side. The reflux condenser was afterwards switched out for a fractional distillation setup. The condenser was filled with water and we started distilling. This is what the vapor front looked like when it started climbing up. I always find that part highly interesting because it just looks mesmerizing when you look at it in real life. First drops of our product were collected. Here you can see the temperature down in the boiling flask. Pure trimethyl borate evaporates at around 68.7 degrees Celsius and you can see that we are around at 51 degrees Celsius. Yet we are collecting a lot of product. How can that be? The reason for that is simple. We are not collecting pure trimethyl borate. This stuff is an azeotrope consisting of 75% trimethyl borate and 25% methanol. This azeotrope boils at 54 degrees Celsius. The heating mantle should be kept on medium temperature because otherwise we would have a lot more methanol in our product. Pure trimethyl borate can only be obtained if something like boron trichloride or tribromide are reacted with methanol. When in contact with water like moisture from the air, boric acid and methanol are again formed. This can be seen on our glass stopper and also inside of the tube leading outside. At some point the temperature went above 58 degrees. The heating mantle was turned off. You can see a few chunks of unreacted boric acid floating inside of the flask. The collection flask containing our Trimethyl borate methanol azeotrope was switched out for a 1 liter round bottom flask. 
I wanted to collect the rest of the methanol containing just a little dry methyl borate. For experiments like making green fire, this stuff even when containing a little dry methyl borate should work. The heating mantle was turned on again and we squeezed every last drop of product out of the distillation flask. While waiting for it to distill over, the methanol dry methyl borate azeotrope was measured out using a measuring cylinder and was then transferred to a storage bottle. In total 143 milliliters were collected. What is interesting is that when you look closely at the measuring cylinder, you can also see some boric acid that formed due to hydrolysis of the trimethyl borate. To calculate the exact yield, I would have to perform a titration. But I didn't want to do that. Therefore, I eyeballed the volume of boric acid that remained back in our distillation flask and it turned out to be around 5 grams. This meant that we got a yield of between 90 and 100 percent. From the second distillation we collected 30 milliliters of methanol containing just a little trimethyl borate. This was transferred to a separate storage bottle. And this is what we collected. Some trimethyl borate methanol azeotrope and some mostly methanol containing still a little trimethyl borate. And now for the fun part that you all waited for. We take a burning dish. We start off by taking some of the methanol trimethyl borate that came over second. The lights are turned off and we light it up. A nice green flame can be observed. The more concentrated trimethyl borate was way more interesting. Again, it was added to a burning dish. The lights were turned off and we lit it on fire. The green flames were way more intense and a lot of smoke was produced. The smoke consists of boron trioxide and should therefore not be inhaled. For this reason a gas mask was used. You can either now skip parts of this video or you can just enjoy the rest of the flame until it dies down. You can see that really a lot of smoke was produced. The entire garage was filled with smoke. And this was it for this video, how to make trimethyl borate. If you like this video, feel free to give me one of these and consider subscribing for more stuff like this in the future. I wish all of you a nice day, until next time.